thanks for joining. It's good to be back in person. Uh, I'm Ruben Hess. I lead the uh, product team for Core Block Storage in Google Cloud. Uh, today I'm excited to share some of the features and products we've been working on, some of the products we'll be launching uh, that'll help you run your workloads with higher performance, lower TCO, and better uh, data protection. Before we go into the details of Hyperdisk and other features, I wanted to take a step back and, and share some of the insights that have been driving how we've been designing the next generation of Google Block Storage. We've been talking to customers in our cloud and on other hyperscalers. We've been talking to customers that have been coming from on-prem and those that started in the cloud. And what we heard relatively uniformly is that block storage is still an area with a lot of gaps, with a lot of pain points and a lot of challenges. Block storage tends to fall short in three key ways. Performance is hard to achieve and scale is hard to achieve in that performance is still typically tied to instance type and size, number of volumes and other factors that don't mesh directly with workload requirements. Second, efficiency can be elusive. You manage the, the disk capacity at the disk level instead of at the overall capacity level, uh, storage level. And, and, and the right sizing is toilsome and, and error prone. And third, there's a lack of comprehensive data protection features. In particular, we noticed some gaps around low RPO RTO solutions and the ability to have cross-region disaster recovery. So when we set about to build the next generation of block storage, we wanted to have something that can really fully live up to the promise of cloud. Block storage that is workload optimized, providing the performance you need where and when you need it. Block storage that is effortlessly efficient, allowing you to hit the TCO goals without complex management overhead. And finally, that is instantly protected, offering you all the key data protection features that you need for your mission-critical workloads. We introduced Google Cloud Hyperdisk about a year ago. It's built in a titanium tiered offload architecture you've heard about earlier today, and we'll hear more about tomorrow. Hyperdisk fundamentally decouples storage processing from compute, much like a private cloud SAN, but with all the elasticity and economic benefits of running on the cloud service. It allows you to easily and dynamically tune storage to your workload. You get higher performance, higher efficiency, and higher flexibility. From a product standpoint, we have a whole portfolio of different volume types that cover the full spectrum of the different workload requirements you see for network-attached block storage. All of these decouple performance from capacity. All of these decouple performance as much as possible from instance type and size. And they're available on both GCE and GKE. Hyperdisk Balance is our next generation general purpose SSD type. Hyperdisk throughput covers HDD style, high scale, high throughput, low cost for data uh, scale out, big, uh, sorry, big data scale out analytics. And on the other extreme, Hyperdisk Extreme covers the highest performance for, for mission sensitive SAP HANA, SQL Server, and Oracle databases. Just a few months ago, we GA Hyperdisk Extreme and Hyperdisk Throughput. Today, we're announcing three key advances for Hyperdisk. First, we're announcing the preview of 500,000 IOPS and 10 gigabytes a second on Hyperdisk Extreme. Second, we're also pre-announcing the preview of Hyperdisk Balanced. And third, we're announcing a much broader availability of Hyperdisk Throughput with the addition of 19 zones. Let's dive a bit more deeply into how Hyperdisk allows you to run your, uh, your workloads more optimized and to easily and dynamically tune storage to your workload. For your most demanding workloads, Hyperdisk Extreme offers the best performance. With 500,000 IOPS in preview, we're actually amongst the, the highest performance of, of all hyperscalers on the cloud. IOPS is provisioned dynamically, and you can tune that within minutes. So there's only a single pricing tier. So at the end of the day, for common database workloads, we expect customers to see a, a, a TCO advantage of up to 40%. As I just mentioned, Hyperdisk Balanced is in preview now, uh, sorry, in preview next month. It'll offer twice the performance of the, of the, the PDA Balance and PDSSD volumes that it replaces. Importantly, it brings a lot of that performance to much smaller instance types with just over 100,000 IOPS on C3 uh, instances with 22 vCPUs. That allows you to really look at what the storage requirements are and the workload requirements are in terms of CPU and memory. And from, I think we'll find for many database workloads, 
you were upsizing the instances to hit the IOPS requirements instead of looking at the actual underlying database CPU requirements. If you include both you know, the, the, the right sizing of the instance type and, and oftentimes the, the, the corresponding right sizing of the licensing costs, that really leads to a drastic improvement in TCO. And finally, Hyperdisk Balanced offers that performance at a single volume. So there's, there's no gymnastics around, around managing RAID arrays or managing the performance of a workload across multiple volumes. Hyperdisk throughput rounds out our portfolio. It offers cost-efficient high throughput for scale-out analytics, for stream processing, and also for tiered storage architectures. You can tune the performance all the way from 10 megabytes a second per terabyte to 90 megabytes a second per terabyte. And so what you'll find, I think, is that Hyperdisk throughput offers essentially the flexibility, the durability, the ease of use of block storage at a cost point that is in the right ballpark of direct attached HDD or even object storage. So Hyperdisk volumes offer market-leading performance in TCO, but by themselves, they don't actually fully tackle the efficiency challenges you have in block storage in the cloud. To truly live up to the promise of the cloud, you need a way to enable effortless efficiency, to achieve high uh, utilization with little overhead and management complexity. Today, achieving that efficiency is very hard. Even though cost optimization is on many of our minds, we're stymied by the fact that in the environments typically run with substantial under, underutilized resources. But because disk capacity is tied to a VM and capacity in general is managed via disks, the, addressing this via right sizing is toilsome and complicated. Second, provisioning by disks leads to unpredictable costs that are hard, hard to plan and budget for. So if you're running at cost infrastructure, you're usually running a dedicated uh, team of planners just to figure out how that streams through your system. And third, managing a fleet of disks that are backing multiple different workloads consistently and with processes is complicated. On-prem, you'd use storage pools and SANs to address these challenges. But in the cloud, such pools have not been available so far. We're excited to announce Hyperdisk storage pools in preview today. Storage pools allow you to manage, to provision and manage your capacity in aggregate, and then to thinly provision volumes from those storage pools. Importantly, the Hyperdisk volumes in the storage pools behave otherwise like Hyperdisk volumes would be outside. So you don't have to adjust your workloads to use storage pools. We believe you'll find that Hyperdisk storage pools are the most cost-effective and the simplest way to buy and manage st block storage in the cloud. Let's go a bit deeper. Today, if you're running a workload, say you know, with a handful of disks, you're looking at planning and provisioning and buying the disks separately, right? For each one of these servers, you look at the data that's required, you look at temporary data that might be hitting that disk, you look at what buffer you want to account for in terms of growth of that disk. What happens is that while you're only utilizing a fraction of the total resources, you're provisioning and paying for every single one of those disks in aggregate. With storage pools, the workload continues to see normal hyperdisk volume. They have the same APIs, the same performance, the same durability. But as the disk writes data, it actually pulls capacity from the pools. And so your pool can be sized much closer to the actual aggregate uh, uh, required data. On top of that, storage pools offer data reduction. So with further compression and deduplication, it further reduces the amount of capacity that you need to plan for in, in your workloads. It really varies, but we found that if you assume typical utilization levels in the fleet out there, if you assume typical compression ratios, we, we expect you to see around 40% cost reduction by using storage pools. So, workload optimized storage on the one hand, storage pools for effortless efficiency on the other hand. That's, that's two pieces to our, to our puzzle. The third one then is of course, is assuring that all of your business critical, all your mission critical workloads have the right data protection. As I mentioned earlier, and this one built all the way at great, as I mentioned earlier, 
um, customer uh, conversations revealed three areas where, where the cloud offerings today are falling short. Um, one is around the ability to radically shorten the backup and restore cycles, lowest RPO, lowest RTO. The second is a way to easily, consistently offer HA in a cross-zone uh, high availability setup. And the third one is built-in cross-region disaster recovery to provide geo-redundancy for, for workloads that need the highest uh, disaster protection, for example, due to regulatory compliance. With instant snapshots, with regional disks and async replication, we are, we're offering all of these. And all of these are first-class built-in primitives. You have data protection with simplicity built-in. And this is the one I need to build all the way out. Uh, there we go. So today, most hyperscalers have the capability to back, up, to back up your data in minutes. But the restoration of that data often takes minutes or even all the way up to hours. That's because most of the existing functionality is optimized purely for the disaster recovery use case. On GCP, with instant snapshots, customers can take snapshots and restore data sets almost instantaneously to cover a wide variety of use cases beyond just the canonical disaster recovery. This includes things like scheduling backups periodically and, and rapidly, and then doing backup verification with a minimum amount of latency and, and uh, RPO RTO. Or capturing restore points before planned maintenance or upgrades to be able to instantaneously recover should something go awry. Or a quick recovery from, from human error or from application software failure. Instant Snapshots offers RPO of seconds and RTO of tens of seconds, 100 times faster than our competition, and are fast enough that you can include them in most workflows and have data protection by default. Uh, there we go. I'm sorry, the, the builds with this clicker are a bit difficult. Um, second, for customers that need the highest availability uh, for their business and mission critical workloads, we have regional disks with RPO of zero and RTO of seconds. Each IO is written both in the primary and secondary zone before they acknowledge to the VM. Setting up and deploying HA is a matter of clicks and it is application agnostic. So you can run the same set of, of, of disks and the same uh, processes consistently for all your workloads, whether they're MySQL, SQL Server, or custom in-house stacks. Our customers actually deploy a wide variety of workloads across that whole spectrum using regional disks because they're fully application agnostic. Finally, async, uh, sorry, fi finally cross-region disaster recovery. With an RPO of one minute, our asynchronous replication offers five times better data protection than our competition with minute by minute, allowing a checkpointed data set to move from the primary region to the secondary region. This enables more granular protection and it minimizes the amount of data loss in the event of, in the event of an outage or a disaster. Of course, a robust disaster recovery plan requires frequent DR drills to ensure that your processes, that your workbooks are accurate and, and lead to the correct results. With their built-in uh, 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 ability to clone data disks rapidly, you can perform frequent and non-disruptive disaster recovery drills. All right, so we are having builds again. All right, so bringing this all together. With hyperdisk volumes, storage pools, and our new data protection features, we have workload optimized storage that is effortlessly efficient and instantly protected. With hyperdisk extreme, balanced, and throughput, you get the performance you need when and where you need it. With storage pools, you can uh, instantly uh, achieve effortless efficiency. And finally, with instant snapshots, with regional disks, when, in, with an and with async replication, regardless of your data protection needs, we've got you covered. We're excited to see how we use hyperdisk volumes, storage pools, and our data, new data protection features in new ways to scale, optimize, and transform on the cloud. So we can skip through this. As always, we're always, always listening to feedback. You can find the survey in the app, as I'm sure you've heard today before. Um, thank you very much.